34 with the opening sentence for ascension. Since we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive in God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let's just take a moment of silence and recount all of those things that we have done wrong. Those things that we know are not acceptable to God and don't fall within His mercy and realm for us. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins. And give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The appointed Psalms, a Psalm 107, Psalm 107, verses 33 to 43, and Psalm 108, Psalm 107, 33 to 43 and Psalm 108. The Lord changed rivers into deserts and water springs into thirsty ground. A fruitful land into salt flats because of the wickedness of those who dwelt there. He changed deserts into pools of water and dry land into water springs. 
he settled the hungry there, and they founded a city to dwell in. They sowed fields and planted vineyards, and brought in a fruitful harvest. He blessed them so that they increased greatly. He did not let their herds decrease. Yet when they were diminished and brought low, through stress of adversity and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes, and makes them wander in trackless ways. He lifted up the poor out of misery, and multiplied their families like flocks of sheep. The upright will see this and rejoice, but all wickedness will shut its mouth. Whoever is wise will ponder these things, and consider well the mercies of the Lord. Psalm 108 My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Awake, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. So that those who are dear to you may be delivered. Save with your right hand and answer me. God spoke from his holy place and said, I will exalt and pass aloud Shechem. I will divide the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet, and Judah my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. On Edom I throw down my sandal to claim it, and over Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? You no longer go out, O God, with our armies. Grant us your help against the enemy, for vain is the help of man. With, with God, God we will, will do valiant deeds, and, and he, he shall tread our enemies under our foot. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David, through your holy prophets. You promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you saw to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, from chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. So that you also may know how I am and what I am doing, Tychicus will tell you everything. He is a dear brother and a faithful minister in the Lord. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we are and to encourage your hearts. Peace be to the whole community and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning at chapter 9, verse 18. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you. In this particular account of Jesus' journey on earth, there is focus on faith. There are at least six groupings of persons and their faith perspective that we at some point in our life's journey can relate to. The woman with the condition, the man who came about his dead daughter, the disciples, the first crowd that Jesus was talking to, even the people gathered at the house all show us different positions in this faith walk that we find ourselves. So for example, we have the people gathered at the house. They laughed 
and jeer at Jesus and the girl's father because in their own minds and their own hearts the girl was dead and here is this man talking foolishness they doubted Jesus now this was to the end of Jesus's ministry here on earth so everyone heard everyone knew mind you they were all waiting for the Messiah they doubted Jesus aren't we too guilty of not believing God's word to us even to the point of laughing and jeering because it seems impossible then of course we have the leader of the synagogue who comes to Jesus for help he kneels and confesses boldly in front of many that a simple touch from Jesus can bring the dead back to life but do you know out of all these the most awe-inspiring thing for me is the woman and no it's not because I'm a woman Jesus is addressing everybody directly all these persons all these groups he's addressing them directly here he is not facing her feeling as though he has turned his back on her maybe going to do something else to sort somebody else out and she reaches out and touches him and he turns to her and grants her her request what is inspiring for me is that sometimes we feel as though God has turned his back on us don't you feel like that sometimes or maybe he's just too busy helping other people and he hasn't seen you in your struggle but the woman does something just as the man with the dead child did something he went he confessed but here she is she has been sick for years years and I'm pretty sure in those years she would have tried all sorts of things to get that hemorrhage to stop and she makes her way through the crowd Jesus is back to her but she still reaches out reaches out and scripture tells us in her mind she says if only I could touch him, just a little touch of his garment, not even him directly, but his clothing, I will be healed. I will be healed just a simple touch of the things that surround him. I will be healed. Even with his back to me, I will be healed. Jesus turns to the woman. And says your faith has made you well your faith has made you well her just believing in that little bit from God can make her in a better position it says a lot to me and for us that just a little bit from God and make the whole situation better not even him directly but him in the surrounding his garment imagine if all of him his hand his feet his word just touches us our situation would change for the better but then something is required of us reaching out is what is required of us not that he is not willing he is willing but it requires us to step out reach out stretch out go to him in faith brothers and sisters even though we feel as though God has abandoned us we may feel as though his back is to us. Simply reaching out to him and trusting and believing just a little bit of him can make our situations better. That's all that is required of us. Believing just a little bit of him is enough. 
for he is enough. Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our intercessions, remembering to pray for the world and all persons who are undergoing strain and stresses in their lives. We use form C. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior, Christ, has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. O oh God, the love of unity and order of peace, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us from your servants, defend us your servants from all assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I ask that at this time we offer prayers for those persons who feel lost and alone. Persons who feel lost and alone. Persons who are depressed. Persons who are feeling as though they need to end their lives. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bring comfort to those persons who feel lost and alone. Those persons who feel that they have nowhere to turn or no one to turn to and that it is better for them to leave this life. Bring them comfort, O oh God. Send help, O oh God, and let them know that you love them. Let them know that you will take care of them, that you, O oh God, have things in store for them. Help us, O oh God, to look for those, not to just focus on ourselves and whatever we desire, but look to others and see what they might need and so bring comfort to them, whether by a listening ear or a hug. Empower us, O oh God, 
and to help those who need your help and your love so that we could bring your help and love to others. Father God, we also remember all persons at this time who are ailing, all persons who are affected directly by this pandemic. Pray especially for those countries, who God, who do not have it under control. We pray for good governance. We pray for strong leaders that will do what is best for every person. We pray especially, oh God, for uh, the United States, oh God, where persons of different races feel uncomfortable, oh God. And we ask you, oh God, to just put our hand. We ask you, oh God, for your intervention. We ask, oh God, for your touch. That you will help us all to understand that we were all made equal, all in your image, and all loved by you. Lord, we bring all these things and ask you to hear our prayer and answer. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. You call Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining me. Good morning. Do have a wonderful day. My face.